Hello everyone, it's um, nice to uh, meet you again at this time that we may have the grace and the opportunity actually to share God's word. Um, and today we are looking at a topic that says celebrate the three feasts forever. Celebrate the three feasts forever. What does this mean? It means to celebrate to, to, to celebrate means to never forget. Celebrating it is a form of reminder for you not to ever forget. But before we go into that, let's look at the Bible scripture for today. From the book of Exodus, chapter number 23, verse 14 to 17. It says, three times a year you are to celebrate a festival to me. Celebrate the festival of our living bread. For seven days eat bread made without yeast, as I commanded you. Do this at the appointed time in the month of Abib, for in that month you came out of Egypt. No one is to appear before me empty handed. Celebrate the festival of harvest with the first fruits of the crops you sow in your field. Celebrate the festival of ingathering at the end of the year when you gather in your crops, gather in your crops from the field. Three times a year, all the men are to appear before the sovereign Lord. Now, doing this. It's a form of remembrance. It's a form of remembrance. And uh, from today's message, we will realize that when we concentrate on God, we will hear God's word. Just like God sent his word to the Israelites. So, one thing I want us to understand today is that it's important for us to concentrate on God's word. It's very, very important that at every point in time, you're meditating upon God's word. As a matter of fact, that is holy meditation. When you do this, what happens? The Holy you you receive the feeling of the Holy Spirit, and then you you see God's plan through His word. Amen. And I bless you today that you may be able to concentrate on this word, that you may be able to meditate upon this word, and that you may enjoy the guidance and the feeling of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, what do we mean by uh, celebrate the three feasts and what are these three feasts? One thing I need you to understand that you must always listen to the voice of God. That is why I talked about the concentration first. Because on see to our eyes, the Holy Spirit is working even now. And the only way the Holy Spirit can work is when you imprint only Christ. Imprinting only Christ means that you concentrating on only Christ and nothing else. Amen. So when you concentrate on this, you'll be able to see God's plan. And what do we mean by that? It means that the only solution to the spiritual problem of man is Christ. And that's why because the problem man has is nothing else but being separated from God as a result of unbelief. And man being separated from God has no choice but to live as a slave of Satan. And the only solution to come out of this is Christ. So the entire books of the Bible is centered around Christ. Even history, the word history, the main figure of it is Christ. That's why we have the BC and the AD, before Christ and after the death of Christ. So therefore, when the Israelites were passing through the wilderness, they were facing a lot of hardship and crisis and that was the time God allow them to pass through this because it's an opportunity for them to concentrate. It's an opportunity for them to enjoy Him guiding them through the Holy Spirit and for them to imprint 
his word as a result of concentration and guidance. Amen. So, but then, when they were passing through this hardship, something happened. When they were passing through the wilderness, what was the, the, the major thing that was happening is they were poor. They were actually, they were poor. But they were poor and had a lot of crisis. But that was the time for them to do what? To concentrate on, on God. God allowed them to pass through that in that they do not have to focus on anything else, focus on anyone else, listen to any other word, but His word. He allowed them to pass through all of this so that they may imprint the, the gospel and as a result of concentration. Because when they are able to concentrate, that is when they will be able to do what? Imprint the gospel. So even for us, when we are, when we are facing hardship, when you think you're poor, you don't have money, uh, you, know, you have debt all over the place and you can't even walk freely, what you should do at that time of your loneliness is to concentrate on the Word of God. You, that is the time you should realize your real problem is not you being poor, it's not you not having money. Your real problem is that mankind that is separated from God has no choice but to suffer under Satan, and that is the reason you're facing that hardship. So, that, is, that time of loneliness, nobody wants to associate with you. As a matter of fact, you're like a captain, just like the Israelite bear. And that is the time that you should enjoy concentration. That is the time you should imprint God's word. And this, another thing is, that is the time you should understand that God has saved you from all the causes and disaster. It's okay if it, if it seems like things are not going well at that particular time, but you should understand that the original problem has been solved. And who solved it? Christ. He has solved all your problems. The real problem that is caused from this separation has been solved by only Christ. Because He is the only one that can solve this problem. That is why John 14 says that the world became flesh and it dwells among us. He has come not to serve, not, not to be served, but to serve. And to give his life as a ransom to many. That he can reconcile us back to God. That is why he is Christ, the true king, the true priest, and the true prophet. As, as the true king, he destroyed the work of Satan. First John 3 8. As the true priest, he set us free from the law of sins and curses. And as a true prophet, he opened the way that we might meet God. That is why John 14 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the, the Father except through me. And what other thing is he telling us even today? That we cannot solve our spiritual problem except we do what? We reconcile with God. And that is through Christ. Amen. So that is why today he's telling us to forever celebrate these three feasts. That through Christ we were able to receive life to cross from death to, to life. We were dead. According to Ephesians 2 1. Let's quickly read that, please. It says, in which you used to live when you follow the way of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. But before that, he said, as for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. And in verse 3 he says, all of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of the flesh and following its 
desires and thoughts, like the rest who were by nature deserving of wrath. But hey, he gave us a solution to this. John 5, 24. Believe in the fact of Passover. That is the main, the, the main thing we are going to talk about today. Believe in the word, the, the fact of Passover. It means that to change your spiritual identity, like we said earlier. To change your what? Your spiritual identity. You're no longer in the position of death because you are in, you are celebrating Passover. Passover means Believing Holy Christ that after the incident of the children of Israelites, what happened? They were able to exit Egypt as free individuals. They were slaves in Egypt as a weak nation to a superpower nation for over four, for about four hundred years. And before then, nine mirror, uh, signs and wonders happened. But in all of this, of these miracles, what happened? Nothing happened. They were still slaves. As a matter of fact, they had to even work harder in servitude. But hey, when they applied the blood, the moment they applied the blood at night, the next morning, they were free. To leave the land of slavery. It means the only solution to our problem is nothing else but Christ. Because even while we were yet sinners, He died on the cross to do what? To demonstrate His love. Why did He have to die on the cross? Because He alone can solve our problem. Because mankind is absolutely impossible. Mankind is absolutely incapable to solve his problem. The only solution is Christ. That's why he came as a true king to destroy the world of Satan. And what is the work of Satan? Satan was what? A liar. The reason why we are separated from God in the first place was because Satan came and planted the seed of unbelief in us through his word. You can be like God. You don't need God. Take, did God say you should not do this? Come on, do it. God doesn't want you to be like him. That is the word of Satan. And as a matter of fact, when you follow popular opinion, those are the things you hear. You can do it by yourself. You don't have to believe in God. You don't need God. You can do it. Yeah, those are good ways actually. But the truth of the matter is, the, only, the more the world is developing, the more mental problem we have, the more spiritual problem all over the place. And the only solution is Christ. Why? 
Because while we were a sinner, he came and died on the cross to demonstrate his love. And he destroyed the work of Satan as a true priest. He died for our sins to set us free. The Bible says in Mark, as it is written in Mark 10 45, that he has not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. You and I. He came to give his to give his life as a ransom. And that's why we can meet God again. Of 
salvation. You'll be able to restore ten million of salvation. You see from the scripture we read that God, nobody comes to the presence of God on that day with empty hands. You know, so many of us don't even know the reason why you must give offering. Giving offering is not because, oh God, I'm giving this so that you bless me, I'm giving this so that. No! You're giving offering because you appreciate the salvation that you have received freely, that you have no qualification for. You're not qualified to receive it, you and I, but you have received it. You're thankful for this. And for the movement, the evangelism movement to continue, for others to hear it, you give offering to support those on the field. That is the reason you should give offering. That is the reason you must receive thanksgiving. That is the reason worship is important. So don't try to solve your problem. Don't try to solve your problem. Rather, just imprint this. This is established. And naturally, your problem will be solved. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And what happened? You will naturally have a blessing of meeting. You naturally have that inner peace. That in that, no matter what you're passing through, wherever you are, it's okay. At that point, you'll be able to worship all by yourself to gain strength. And when you do this, God will allow you to meet someone who has similar mindset, who is also you know, in, interested in worship, who has also received healing through the world. And together you will form a team. So you will always remember that that your, 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 your citizenship is not of this earth. That you're not poor. Because why? Your background is where? It's heaven. You know, you realize your background is heaven. Because all you believe in is the word of God. You're enjoying the triune God. The kingdom of God has come upon you. The Holy Spirit is dwelling in you. So wherever you are, it's okay. Wherever you are, it's a faith for you to tell the people there that Jesus is the Christ. It doesn't mean you have to be a pastor. It doesn't mean you have to start you know, yelling all over the place. It means even your life will proclaim Christ because you have that in that place and you're able to tell everyone you come across that Jesus is the Christ. Oh, have you heard about Christ today? Naturally, it will happen. It's not something you force. You will not try to solve your own problem by yourself. Knowing fully well, you cannot solve your problem. And in conclusion, in conclusion, don't ever try to be too to be too diligent without that. It's good to be diligent. Diligent is a very good venture. But you need God. Don't be too diligent without God. Because at every point in time, you need to enjoy your background. It means you need to restore your identity. Your identity means for you to enjoy the blessing of the throne, for angels to be mobilized for your sake. In that wherever you go, what you should you enjoy the blessing of with Emmanuel and oneness. With that, that is, wherever you are, you are able to pray. That is what it means. You should be a person of prayer. 
You should be someone who enjoys prayer. You can only enjoy your identity and your authority when you pray. So you need to always enjoy prayer, 24 hours. You enjoy prayer. That is someone who has done what? Who has received healing through the word by doing what? Believing the fact of Passover, experiencing the, the power of the Pentecost, and of course, look to the future of Incantry, look to the future of evangelism, look to the future of what? Of the gospel, look to the future of the mission, look to the future of what evangelization. That is someone who has received healing from the word. And that is the person that can pray. And I pray and bless you today that even today, may you be the one that will receive healing through God's word and may you be the one that will enjoy the blessing of the throne of the triune God. Let us pray. Dear loving Father, we thank you for this moment you've given us one more time to share your word. We know we are weak and lucky, we could be very diligent, we could be very, very, uh, we could try every other method to solve our problem, not knowing, not realizing that all we need is to increase Christ, that your kingdom will come upon us and the Holy Spirit fill us and see to our eyes. The Father, may we hold on to this part and may we always remember that you, Jesus, is the Christ the only answer and solution to all of our problems. May you fill us with your Holy Spirit that we may enjoy a life of realistic prayer and that we may get the strength that everywhere we stand through our specialties, through, through our, 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 our business, through our occupation, that we may be able to tell the entire world that Jesus is the Christ. Father, empower us that we may restore the thanksgiving of salvation. Thank you, Father, for answering prayers. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, trusting and believing. Amen. Thank you. See you next time.